as I was praying about my time here, the Spirit of God impressed upon me that there is something that we are now positioned to be raised to and to be shifted into. There's a greater good that the Spirit of God desires to shift us into. And so, as I have been praying about what to share with you, there was a text that came to my mind. Pastor Oscar shared that you all have been talking about light here. And Matthew, the sixth chapter and the 22nd verse dawned upon me. Somebody say it dawned on him. Matthew 6 and 22, and it reads in the King James Version, the light of the body is the eye. If therefore thine eye be single, thy whole body shall be full of light. Amplified Version says the eye is the lamp of the body. So if your eye is clear or spiritually perceptive, your whole body will be full of light benefiting from God's presence. So I want to preach, teach from the subject today, the light of spiritual perception Awaken the greatness of God in you. I want you to just touch yourself on your physical body and say, greatness of God, awaken. Now, 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 now this time, now that you know what we're going to say, I want you to say it again and bring it up. I saw somebody point up like that. Yeah, bring it up. Say, greatness of God, awaken. Now, as we say that, we have an awareness that words impact our physiology. Words impact our way of thinking. Words impact the way we perceive ourselves and life and others. It has an impact on the mind and the physical body. But this text shows us some powerful things. It shows us in its core that life is deeply spiritual. Somebody say life is deeply spiritual. And so I want us to examine some things. Jesus' Sermon on the Mount, which spans three whole chapters, is regarded as containing some of the most socially inclusive and yet mystical teachings of Jesus. And so we're just going to focus on this one verse today and also uh, connect it in some other ways. But if you'll notice that 23rd verse in New King James Version says, but if your eye is bad, your whole body will be full of darkness. If therefore the light that is in you is darkness, how great is that darkness? Okay. So there's a duality being talked about here, right? There's this dual discussion of the light and the darkness and what its impact is on the effect of light that we encounter. Now, if you look back at that first verse, I want to read it again because I want it to dawn in your awareness. Matthew 6, the light of the body is the eye. If therefore your eye is single, your whole body shall be full of light. Now, I said that I hear the Spirit of God saying to us, I'm lifting you up and taking you further. But how is God going to do this? Well, you're going to see in this message today that light and the eye and the body have some symbolic spiritual meanings. Somebody say they have symbolic meanings. Metaphysically speaking, light represents consciousness, awareness, and or revelation we know where we're going by way of light without light we are not aware of the direction that our life has right the eye the eye represents attention and specific awareness huh? because our eyes our physical eyes cannot perceive all that is in the universe around us but only perceives what is in front of us physically speaking the eye represents a specific awareness. Someone say specific awareness. And third, the body. The body represents external reality or the whole manifested world. Someone say external reality. So you've got the light, you've got the eye, and you've got the body. This is a, a metaphysical understanding that causes us to awaken something within us that Christ has come to show us. So my question to you today is, as you live your life, as you journey your journey, what do you see? In fact, I want to ask you today, if you can engage some aspect of your seeing and your hearing, what realization can you awaken within yourself that will open up your world to God's greatness? 
How many know that what we walk in, the light that we have working in us and through us has something to do with what we've awakened in us? So ask yourself, what am I not seeing? What's asleep in me? What can be awakened? Because guess what, people? Your perception is your reality. See, sometimes this is a hard, bitter pill to swallow because we sometimes think that it's the people working against us or it's things just can't work out. But watch this. Your perception is your reality. So the prayer is what? God, give me a new perspective. Someone say it. God, give me a new perspective. A new perspective. You know what I like about being down here in St. Petersburg, Florida? There's a lot of light. There's a whole lot of light. In fact, St. Petersburg is considered the sunshine city. With an average of some 361 days of sunshine a year, it has the Guinness World Record for logging the most consecutive days of sunshine. From 1967 to 1969, there were 768 days of sunshine without ceasing. Isn't that wild? Of course, except for when it was n nighttime. But we're in a physical environment where light is more highly energized and concentrated. So what does that mean for our sense of spirituality? Well, again, remember, light represents consciousness and revelation. In the beginning, God said what? Light be and light was. That Genesis account is a description of what happened when the word of God went into effect and that word was released. Let there be light. The translation is literally light be. And at that de declaration of light, the universe and the cosmos went flying into motion. And scientists say that the, the universe hasn't stopped expanding since. And so the power of that light declaration means that there is an act of increase that light releases. Light engenders every creative act of increase. Light fosters every creative act of increase. Note the human body. Think about your human body. It's composed of the substance of the stars and the cosmos, science says. That the very matter that composes your physical frame is made of the same elements and substance that the stars and the cosmos are composed of. So that what exists in your physical frame is literally stardust. So that you are made of the essence of all that is. That's a startling concept, isn't it? And so we're quite literally light beings. Did you know that? Well, guess what? Science says it, but so did Jesus. Huh? Yeah. Jesus even said it. Uh, yeah, in John 8 and 12, he said, I'm the light of the world. But in Matthew 5 and 14, he said, what? You are the light of the world. So that was Jesus's representation of understanding the fact that we're all composed of this light essence. Someone say there's light in me. There's light in me. You're composed of light essence. So what does this have to do with being able to awaken the greatness of God in me? I'm glad you asked because if you keep on listening, you're going to hear how we are able to work this working of light into our awareness to work God's works for good in the world. Someone say amen to that. Say there's light in me. Now, the Bible we have to remember is not a Western text as much as we would like to think it is. And so the mind of the East thinks differently than the mind of the West. And if we only read the Bible thinking of it with a Western mind, we'll miss some of the roots. How many know that the Bible has Eastern roots? Huh? What are you talking about? The, it is understood that the person who was believed to have, to have composed the first five books, the Pentateuch in the Old Testament, which is composing the Jewish texts, yes, was considered to be Moses. But where did Moses get his training from? Moses grew up in Egypt. So he was getting loads of training while he was in Egypt. And then there are studies that show that much of what we try to say is purely Western concept, it's got an Eastern root. So when we understand that we're holding a text and we're reading a text that has an Eastern symbology associated with it, we can see something new. Somebody say, see something new. 
there are references to God as being light even in ancient religions. You know, there are some who say, oh, well, they were worshiping the sun. Well, some folks realize that they may or may not have been, but the point represents this fact, that there is power in understanding the function of light in your being. Say there's light in me. Now, 1 Corinthians 2 and 14 shows us that the natural man receives not the things of the spirit of God, for they are spiritually discerned. So we're going to examine things from the natural and from the spirit. Somebody say from the natural and from the spirit. So if you look at this in the natural, and we're going somewhere, so stay with me. As we build this, you'll be able to receive what's coming at the end as you broaden your awareness to what I'm about to lay out before you. We're going to build this, and then at the end, we'll be able to receive what God has for us here, okay? And you're going to be receiving stuff all, all along the way. But open your mind to hear, and I have a story that I'm going to share here, too, that I want you to be able to be receptive to. Now, if you're looking at this in the natural we know from the Harvard School of Public Health, laboratory, laboratory studies show that vitamin D can reduce cancer cell growth, help control infections and reduce inflammation. There are, there are uh, instances where people have moved uh, to places like a Florida or a California to help their body heal because there's a healing virtue in the sunlight. There's also this understanding that health professionals share, which says that exposure to sunlight is thought to increase the brain's release of a hormone called serotonin. Serotonin is, is associated with what? Boosting the mood and helping a person to feel calm and focused. So if you can boost your mood with sunlight, what can spiritual light do to your life? And that's what that text in Matthew 6, was trying to tell us. The light of the body is the eye. If your eye is single, your whole body will be full of light. Mm. So let's go back here for a moment. Refracted light is this concept in physics. Refracted light. It, it, it's, it's where th there's a change in the direction of a wave passing from one medium to another from a, or from a gradual change in the medium. Someone say a change in direction. So, so, so if, if, if light waves can change a direction and there's cause, there's a cause for refracted light, sound waves do this too, water waves do this too. What am I saying? That whatever life path you find yourself on, you are not ultimately stuck. Sometimes we think we're in dead end situations, but Jesus comes to renew our awareness that there is an eye of spirit that you have, that you possess, that if that eye is single, your whole body can be full of light. Because remember, as the physicists taught us, that refracted light can change a direction. Someone say, I can change a direction. Scientists tell us that light reflect, refracts whenever it travels at an angle into a substance with a different refractive index or optical density. All right, for example, real quick, the light is always shining, isn't it? Always shining. But depending on the object's positioning, it might not be allowed to be a beneficiary or a conduit of the light's rays and impact. In other words, while the sun is shining full blast, I can be in the middle of a snow blizzard because of my geographical positioning, but that doesn't stop the light from shining, does it? And so what we have to ask ourselves is, how can I position myself to be a conduit of that light? Say, how can I position myself to be a conduit of the light? And remember, light, metaphysically speaking, means revelation or illumination. Psalm 119, 130 says, the entrance of your word gives light. Say, the light is in me. John 22 Job 22, 28 says, thou shalt decree a thing and it shall be established unto you and the light shall shine upon your way. Somebody say light. So the eye is the lamp of the body, but the eye represents attention and specified awareness. So what you see and how you see it becomes a guiding force for your unfolding experiences of life. What lies ahead for you? is connected to how you view it now. So somebody said, God, give me a new perspective. In the study of, opt of optometry, it's the practice or profession, we know, of examining the eyes for visual defects and prescribing corrective lenses. For example, me getting contacts was quite a journey. 
<laughs> when I went in there to get my lenses, it took me almost 45 minutes to get them in my eyes. I had them and I had to practice for 45 minutes. And in the process of practicing it, I almost wanted to say, forget this, I'm gonna just stick with glasses because this is too much. But something in me said, Jason, just keep trying. <laughs> and I also had some help. There were two nice ladies that came over and they said, well, we're just gonna sit with you and help you do this. And so they helped me to do that. But I eventually was able to get new vision because I tried something new and didn't give up in the process. How many know that sometimes there's something new that God wants to give to us, but we try it one time or we try it a couple times and we say, oh, well, maybe that's not what God wants for me. I could have said, oh, maybe God doesn't want me to have those contacts. But instead, I said, I'm just going to see. And that 45 minutes felt like an eternity. <laughs> but when I looked up, the time passed. Somebody realized today that what God wants for you is something that's stirring in your heart right now. There are dreams and visions that God has placed in your spirit today. And what is unfolding in your future has something to do with your inner ability to look at it and say you are possible. I want to know, is there something in you today that can look within yourself and say to that vision, to that dream, to that aspiration, you are possible. Is there anybody in here who's got something inside of you that might be just beyond the bounds of your comfort zone? <laughs> and just beyond the bounds of my comfort zone. Woo! There's something new and good. Mm, are you with me? So when we were developing our spiritual perception, someone say spiritual perception. It's not always easy to adjust to it at first. But if we'll just keep trying, keep growing, we will awaken a new ability, a new realization, a new perception that awakens God's greatness in and through us. So what's this talk about if your eye is single? King James Version says, if your eye is single, your whole body will be full of light. Amplified says, if your eye is clear. Other version says, if your eye is good. Another version says, if your eye is sound. Another version says, if your eye is healthy. What is all that about? Single, clear, good, sound, healthy? What is it talking about? And so I said to myself, well, we're going to have to go a little deeper here, huh? Somebody say, I want to go deeper. If you look in the Greek word, it's transliterated, literally hoplus, which means those things which you said, single, clear, good, sound, healthy. But this is the definition that stuck out to me. Fulfilling its office. If my eye is single, it's fulfilling its office. It's focused, it's clear, it's good, it's sound, it's healthy. It's fulfilling its office. When you fulfill an office, what does that mean? That means when you decide that, yes, I'm going to fulfill the duties of this job description, then I fully assume that role and responsibility, right? And then when I decide that that's no longer in line with who I'm developing, we move on right? But wherever we are, we decided to fulfill that office. Hmm? Sometimes we feel like we're stuck and I'm, and, and, and I'm just here to help somebody today to know that where you are today, right here and right now, you decided to be here. So that means that nothing that you truly decide is impossible for you. If you truly decide it, it might take a little while, but it's possible. Someone say it's possible. Hoplus, it means fulfilling its office, but how do we take it from the realm of possibility 
to the realm of actuality. Somebody say from possibility to actuality. Well, that's what Jesus is trying to teach us here. He's saying that your eye must be fulfilling its office. If your eye, your spiritual eye is fulfilling its office, then your whole body will be full of light power just as the cosmos were spoken into being and have never stopped expanding there is a spiritual power that rests in your inner being that when you begin to develop a single eye the eye of the spirit that functions in its office and sees the good as the end result concerning your matter there is a spiritual release of unlimited good for you is your spiritual eye fulfilling its office? My spiritual eye doesn't always fulfill its office. Sometimes I'll get an insight into it and something powerful will happen. And then I'll go a couple years and forget. <laughs> Has that ever happened to you? Something really good happens in your life. You don't even recognize sometimes why it happens. Oftentimes it's connected to that spiritual eye seeing something that it saw and you forget or didn't know that your good was connected to it. Is your spiritual eye fulfilling its office? Your spiritual eye has an office, a role to fulfill. And this role, people of God, wherever you're hearing and how you're hearing, the role of this spiritual eye is independent of your natural senses. Mm. Sometimes we are so stuck to our natural senses that we don't realize that it is a thin veil that can be pierced at the perception of spiritual insight. In Eastern symbolism, this single eye, they would have called it in some circles the third eye. <laughs> the mystic would call it the eye of imagination. But the scriptures say that it is spiritually discerned in 1 Corinthians 2, verse 14. So if my eye is single, that means there is great focus. Somebody say, if my eye is single, that means there is great focus or focused perception or perceiving from the realm of the spirit. What can your spiritual eye see from the realm of the spirit? Can you see yourself happy from the realm of the spirit? Can you see yourself whole from the realm of the spirit? Can you see yourself healed from the realm of the spirit? Can you see yourself free to go and be and do and have from the realm of the spirit? Am I on your row yet? Can you see yourself protected and in peace from the realm of the spirit? And somebody said, well, we tried, but we don't know how. I tried, but I don't know how. I'm, I'm comfortable where I am. I don't want to grow. Just, just, just let me be and you go on. But we're here to become. When God said light be, the universe went into expansion and it hasn't stopped expanding. And there's something in your spirit that's expanding. There's something in your spirit that's growing. There's something in your spirit that's saying, God, you want to manifest something through me? Yes, I position myself for you to do it through me. Somebody say, God, I position myself for you to do it through me. Mm. And so Jesus is trying to show us how to do that. I love this meditation that Howard Thurman wrote in the moment of pause, the vision of God. Howard Thurman was an African-American Christian mystic and theologian from the 20th century, and he simply said this in this writing. It is good to make an end of movement, to come to a point of rest, a place of pause. There is some strange magic in activity, in keeping at it, in continuing to be involved in many things that excite the mind and keep the hours swiftly passing, but it's a deadly magic. One is not wise to trust it with too much confidence. The moment of pause 
The moment of rest has its own magic. There is an inner insistence toward wholeness, and it is this that the moment, the experience of quiet announces. It's a fearful announcement. Bring in your scattered parts. Be present at all the levels of your consciousness. This is the time of togetherness. Only he who has come to a point of holy focus may be blessed with the vision of God. And without the vision of God, there can at last be no significance in living. And Howard Thurman was used to cause people to go on the inner planes of life and see life from new levels. But the Apostle Paul said something about this too. In Philippians chapter 3, in verse 13 to 14, he said, Brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended, but one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to those things which are ahead, I press toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. This one thing I do, this has everything to do with if your eye is single, your whole body will be full of light. I love what David Oyedepo said in his book, Exploits in Ministry, who is a pastor from Nigeria. It is my responsibility to pursue my vision with singleness of mind and purpose, allowing no distraction. It's whose responsibility? Mine. Somebody say, it's my responsibility. Oral Roberts, who was a famous evangelist of the 1950s and 60s and the founder of a university, wrote a book with major revelation right in its title, When You See the Invisible, You Can Do the Impossible. Romans 1.20 says, for the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen. Neville Goddard, who was a popular new thought teacher and mystic, said in his book, Resurrection, listen to this. He didn't say that part. I'm saying that. Quote, to cultivate the faculty of seeing the invisible, we should often deliberately disentangle our minds from the evidence of the senses and focus our attention on an invisible state, mentally feeling it and sensing it until it has all the distinctness of reality. Did you know that that is how I got into seminary and graduated? So there were some uh, extenuating circumstances that made it a little harder for me to get in. And before I got in, I came up with all the reasons as to why I couldn't. Mainly one of which was that I had a hundred undergrad credits, but no bachelor's degree. And so I had lots of mentors who were saying, you know, you should be in seminary. You should do this. You should do that. And my response <laughs> would sometimes be, are you going to sponsor me? crickets. <laughs> but that's okay. I said, I'm going to begin to apply something. And when it came time for me to have this intention, I had this intention. Okay, you know what? I think I'd love to go to Christian Theological Seminary. What I did was I quieted myself, my mind, and I created small increments of meditation. So I would set my timer to maybe five or 10 minutes and maybe three or four times a day, I would visualize that I was in the classroom and I did that one a few times over, you know, a couple weeks. And then I visualized that I was opening a letter that had the Christian theological seminary header at the top with the words, congratulations, you have been accepted. And then I went on down my imaginary paper and I saw it saying with a full ride in scholarship. I can't make this stuff up. And so that became a repetitive practice within myself over a period of a couple weeks. I did the natural steps too. I submitted my application papers. I did all of those natural things. But remember, I felt at one point before this that I had extenuating circumstances that would prevent me from necessarily being accepted. But I was operating Matthew 6.22. To my surprise, I don't know why I was surprised, but I was, I was surprised and excited. After all the natural steps unfolded, after I submitted all the things and, you know, did all those things to do, while at the same time going within and doing the meditations and the visualizations and all of that, 
when I got the letter in the mail that said, congratulations, you've been accepted, and you have a full ride scholarship plus a stipend, I said, okay, God, I took the paper and I literally ran around my house in joy. <laughs> Part of that joy was because I recognized that something had happened in the spirit realm before it materialized. I recognized that something had occurred. There had been a shift in my consciousness. My eye had been enlightened to such a degree that I saw it before I saw it. And I just want to know if there's someone in here today who can see it before you see it. If you can see it before you see it, God can work wonders. I said, if you can see it before you see it, God can work wonders. But guess what? We do those things and then we forget. <laughs> and then I had some other trials and challenges that I had to work my way through, but I wasn't using the eye of the spirit to solve my problems in some ways, in some instances. And then I had to remember, wait a minute, you've got a spiritual source. Every time I've gone to my spiritual source, things have had ways of working out. Somebody say amen. I'm encouraging you today to go to your spiritual source and remember that light fosters every creative act of increase. Light is in you because we are light beings. That light represents consciousness and revelation. That the eye is the lamp of the body. So if your eye is clear or spiritually perceptive, then your whole body will be full of light. Amplified says benefiting from God's precepts. There's a benefit for you when you do this. Somebody say there's a benefit for me. I mean, how many know this message is not for everybody? What did we read in 1 Corinthians 2? But the natural man receives not the things of the spirit of God for their foolishness to him. And they must be spiritually discerned. And so the body is about the body of your affairs as well. So your whole body, the body of your affairs can be full of light, benefiting from God's precepts. Because light dispels the darkness. I'm rounding up here. We're almost done. Somebody say light dispels the darkness. Dr. Martin Luther King said, darkness cannot drive out darkness. Only light can do that. Hate cannot drive out hate. Only love can do that. And so I believe that the light of God eradicates poverty. The light of God can cause solutions and, and works of justice, like even the function of this church. God can cause that to produce good. The light of God eradicates sickness, whether it happens instantly or whether it happens over a period of time. The light of God eradicates depression. The light of God drives out the darkness and pushes it back. Remember, you're a light being. You can live in God like power. The entrance of God's word gives you light. Declare, I'm seeing something new. I'm seeing it differently. I'm seeing something I've never seen before. Declare it. I'm seeing life with fresh eyes. I'm seeing new possibilities. I'm viewing my situation differently. I'm seeing life from a higher level. I'm viewing my situation as a setup for an advantageous outcome. Advantageous outcome. Say it again. Advantageous outcome. Come on, I speak to those areas of your life prophetically today that you didn't know how they were going to work out. And I declare with you, advantageous outcome. Say it, advantageous outcome. I'm seeing my way out. Say it, I'm seeing my way out. Say it, I'm seeing my way up. I'm seeing my way up. Say, I see God arising in me. Stand up where you are, please, if you will. Say, I see God arising in me. I see God arising in strength in me. I see God arising in peace in me, in my home, in my home, on my job, as I come and as I go. I see God arising in me in comfort. Oh, but do you believe it, people of God? Say, I see God arising in me in comfort. 
Because remember, the Holy Spirit's called the comforter. <laughs> Did you know that? <laughs> the Holy Spirit is the comforter. So what can you see? I see God arising in me in power and might. Say it. And as that becomes your center, as that becomes your core, as you return to the truth of your being, all of the social opinions fall by the wayside and you become who God has called you to be, a beloved child of God, a light being. Say, I'm a light being. I'm a light being. I'm a light being. God bless you. Much love. Let's put our hands together. Celebrate the light of God in you.